Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a 5 color world tree deck whose goal it is to put every single god that's legal in standard in play at the same time using the world tree, a land that comes into play tapped and taps for green mana and as long as we control 6 or more lands, lands we control can tap for 1 mana of any color and for 10 mana and tapping and sacrificing the world tree we can search our library for any number of god cards and put them onto the battlefield and then shuffle our library and our deck is playing all 19 gods that are legal in standard starting out with Valky, God of Lies, can also be played as Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter we've got Heliot, Sun Crowned Raidan, God of the Worthy, Cosima, God of the Voyage, Egon, God of Death, Burgi, God of Storytelling, Yorn, God of Winter, Esika, God of the Tree, Clothis, God of Destiny, Halvar, God of Battle, Thassa, Deep Dwelling, Erebos, Bleak Hearted, Toralf, God of Fury, Nylea, Keen Eyed, Kolvori, God of Kinship, Elrond, God of the Cosmos, Turgrid, God of Fright, Perforos, Bronze Blooded, and finally Athreos, Shroud Veiled. So all 19 gods in standard, and thanks to Perforos' haste ability, they'll all be able to attack at the same time, and we've got enough devotion to turn on most of our gods, especially if we also happen to have Altar of the Pantheon, which increases our devotion for each color by one, which will make it possible for our blue gods to turn into creatures as well, otherwise we lack one blue devotion. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck here. We do need some ramp to get to 11 mana to sacrifice world tree which is where cultivate comes in handy as well as a migration path which can search up multiple basic lands and put them on the battlefield tapped got two of each basic and the reason we're playing these snow covered basics is for god of winter so you can potentially untap them to generate extra mana we also have binding the old gods which can ramp on the second chapter searching up a forest so we've got a few triomes here to potentially fetch up with our binding the old gods as well We've got a bit of interaction with Doomscar as our sweeper of choice that can already be cast on turn 3, as well as a Fire Prophecy, which can also put one of the gods in our hand back on the bottom of our library, so we don't need to necessarily play it, as well as a Valakut Awakening, which can do the same for multiple cards in our hand to hopefully find more ramp and interaction. Then alongside our four copies of The World Tree, we also have two copies of Nylea's Intervention, which lets us search our library for up to X land cards, reveal them and put them into our hand. So this can help us find The World Tree if we don't have one in play already, and can also just make sure we can keep hitting our land drops even though it doesn't actually ramp. Then we've got a Maze Mind Tome for more card selection and card draw. Can also potentially flicker it with the Yurion, which is our companion. We are playing 90 cards in this deck instead of the regular 80 for a Yurion deck, just so we could fit in all these gods and still have enough ramp spells to make the deck function. And then we also have the full play set of Path to the World Tree as a very thematic card in this deck. Can search up any basic land as it enters the battlefield. And then for 7 mana we can sacrifice it, so we gain 2 life, draw 2 cards, target opponent loses 2 life, Path deals 2 damage to up to 1 target creature, and we get to make a 2-2 green bear creature token. So that's a lot of value for a card that we can also potentially flicker with Yurion to get an extra basic land. And then, as we already mentioned, four copies of Altar of the Pantheon, which can increase our devotion by one for each color combination, as well as tapping for one mana of any color, and if we control a god, a demigod, or legendary enchantment, we also gain one life, which is going to come up in this deck quite often. And then going over the mana base, two of each snow-covered basic to go with our god of winter and our various search effects, as well as four of the red-green pathway, four of the red-white pathway, and four of the green-white pathway, as well as one of each green triome to search up with our Finding the Old Gods, and then of course our four copies of The World Tree, and four copies of Fabled Passage. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's not actually all that bad, since we can play Awakening as a tap land, and then Cultivate can help hit our land drops, as well as Migration Path. So we really just need to draw any third land, and there we go could wait a turn on Awakening since if I do eventually draw another land I might want to um, cast Awakening to get rid of some of these gods but on the other hand I might also want to foretell Doomscar on turn two so maybe it's still better to play Awakening tapped here and then turn two we can foretell turn three cultivate and then I can Doomscar for three mana later opponent on a Sultai snow deck 
Of course, we're still missing the world tree, so that's going to be one of the cards we want to find the most. For now, I think I still go with the Doomscar plan. And then we can play Path in a later turn. Next turn, Cultivate, get some more white mana. Alright, opponent's got the God of Winter. So they're gonna be able to make a lot of mana next turn. So I wanna get second white source, and then I guess we'll get. Doesn't matter too much here, maybe a swamp, in case we need to binding. Ascendant Spirit, good combo with God of Winter, as they can use that extra mana to pump up Ascendant Spirit. Although we will be able to Doomscar next turn, play Path to the World Tree, get Snow-Covered Island, and then keep ramping with Migration Path. Could also play Colvori, which is going to be decent at fetching up additional gods. Opponent passes, but they can level up Ascendant Spirit end of turn. And we're just gonna Doom Scar here. And then, yeah, Migration Path gets two more lanes, and then we can activate Path to the World Tree as well. Tome is also a good one. So we'll Path, get Mountain, maybe second Blue Source. Keep Forest in the deck, I think, in case we get a Binding going, which can search up Forests. Stop an Upkeep so we can potentially Scry. Opponent's gonna ramp with Cultivate. And I'll scry end of turn here. And then we're just looking for World Tree pretty much. Don't think I need to keep another Migration Path. And I'll scry again on Upkeep. Since we can activate Path to the World Tree, Athreos can go. Another Doom Scars, pretty useful. So, could activate Path, main phase to hit my land drop. That seems okay, even if we miss out on two damage to a creature here. Alright, there's Binding. And then, can play another Path. Which can get. We'll go with another Swamp. If our opponent plays the artifact half of God of Winter, we can destroy it with Binding. Ugin the Spirit Dragon, a little unexpected here, but can also be answered with Binding. Can get rid of Path to the World Tree in the Bear Token with a minus two. And then could put Yurion in hand so we can potentially flicker binding next turn. But our opponent concedes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. 
No real interaction, but plenty of ramp and intervention to find a world tree. So hopefully our opponent's not too aggressive here. Probably gonna have to play Awakening Tapped just to make sure we don't miss a, a land drop. I can maybe wait one turn. Sure, I guess we'll play the planes for now. Just in case we pick up an extra land so I can keep Awakening to shuffle away some of our guns we don't need. Turn to Florahedron. Yeah, gonna just have to play this tapped, sadly. Turn 3 Altar, turn 4 Migration Path, maybe. Visionary draws a card. Could also play Raydan first, just as a distraction here. And then next turn we can Migration Path. Get our blue and black mana sorted. Alright, set us in training on Visionary. Turns it into a 3 2. And Beanstalk gonna keep ramping. And an Innkeeper. I think I'm okay trading here. So let's see if Beanstalk comes out. Instead, just another Cultivate, so Killing Visionary saved us from Beanstalk for an extra turn. And scale the Heights on Innkeeper, fair enough. Alright, so this turn I can go Altar into Helvar, just to put a blocker out there. And then next turn we can fire off a big Intervention, searching up some lanes. can also get our cycling lands, which we can then cycle to draw extra cards. And I'm actually just one white devotion away from turning on Heliots. Alright, transformation, gonna turn Halvar into a 3-3, still good enough. And also still keeps the two white devotion for Heliod. So getting Yurion in play will make sure we have a 5-5 Indestructible to block the Giant. Another Scale the Heights. And Reclaim the Wastes. Okay. So our opponent's almost on empty here. Doomscar is also a nice one to have, good insurance. Although I don't even have to cast it right now. So how about we Intervention for 4, maybe? And then I can still cycle one of the lands we get. Or I can play Heliod, which is maybe better. And then we'll get two copies of World Tree, just in case, and two cycling lands. So next turn, we can get Yurion in play potentially, or we can wipe the board first with Doomscar. I suppose Halvar being turned into an Alchemist Altar didn't gain one life, so I probably wanted to heal it before tapping Altar for mana, so we gained one when we cast Intervention. Another Beanstalk Adventured. 
So there is something to be said for playing Yurion to turn on Heliod, make the opponent overextend with Beanstalk and then wipe the board. How much mana do we have here? I guess we can already activate World Tree next turn, so just uh, casting a Doomscar here seems good enough. So... Can even put a plus one counter on Helvar with Heliod, that's a cool synergy. You discover a lot of cool synergies when playing with so many random one-offs. Alright, and then next turn should be able to activate World Tree just about. And Generous Tray. I guess that must be one of the starter decks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Heal, it's already in play. Sadly, Halvar and Raidan couldn't join us for this one. And tap all our lands with God of Winter, because why not? Could activate Heliot for lifelink. What else can we do here? Can activate Erebos by sacrificing creatures. Nylea can find more creatures, although we already have all of them in play. Same with Kolvori. And Thassa can tap down creatures as well, so I guess we could have activated Thassa before blocks. I think we'll be just fine here. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Intervention for World Tree, double migration path for ramp. Maybe Egon as a distraction. Got a few cards that can eventually end up in the graveyard. So I'll probably fetch a swamp at first. Opponent on red black, Temple of Malice. A removal heavy deck we actually don't mind playing against since we're happy to play a long, slow game where we don't present many creatures for the opponent to kill. Play Trium. We'll see what the opponent is up to. Turn to Croxa. Do I get rid of God of Death here? I think I do. Doomscar is also a nice one. So, could put Yorion in hand, or we could s squirrel away this Doomscar before the opponent can make us discard it. An extra migration path. If they make me discard once again, not sure what to get rid of. Probably a migration path, although I'll be sad about it. Alright, opponent on Grixis. And it's gonna run out of 4 3 Bone Crusher. Fair enough. So, already have double white. If they present another threat here, perfect. We can Doomscar and then still Migration Path. Next turn cast a big Nylias Intervention. And get our World Tree. So, can intervention for, let's say, four. I 
and then get two copies of World Tree. We'll get a an untapped land since we already had a cycling land in hand. Maybe Fable Passage. And then play World Tree. Put Yorn in hand. And how many lands do we have here? Five. So next turn we can activate World Tree. Calamity Bear gonna double damage from Tectonic Giant. So I guess we don't need to fetch here. Activate World Tree. And we should be able to attack for the win. Sadly, Erebos wouldn't be able to join this one. And God of Death already got discarded earlier, so just 17 of them. I guess we'll let Erebos join in on the fun. Go full control. And then untap our lanes. Activate Thassa. Could activate Heliot for lifelink, but that doesn't seem necessary. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and... Don't hate this, we have Awakening to get rid of all runes and Perforos. Bit of interaction with Prophecy and Binding. And we already have World Tree, which is pretty important. Hopefully pick up an untapped land, so we don't need to play Awakening as a tap land. Alright, that's good. Probably can afford to World Tree, and then turn 3 I can Prophecy if needed. Also have the option of running out Whispering Raven. I guess Mono Green, maybe that's not such a bad idea. And Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. And picked up God of Winter. So Whispering Raven attacks. And let's see, I think I need to keep lands on top. Since I want an Awakening and then be able to play a land after. So we'll bottom bottom. And then probably get rid of all four gods. Alright, there's my land. Next turn, I guess we're still missing black for binding, although we will be able to play turn 6 once we turn on World Tree. And Prophecy, a decent answer to Harbinger in the meantime. So let's main phase it in case we pick up another play. I'm probably just going to Awakening again to try and find more ramp cards. Could also put Yorion in hand so I can Binding into Yorion. I guess I don't hate that. At least we dodged the Vorinclex for now. Which could shut off Binding, so... Ooh, Gigantosaurus, 10-10. I guess we'll have to kill that instead, but it does mean I'm dead to another green creature, which is pretty likely. Although I don't really see any alternatives. It's not often that Yorvo gets two plus one counters. Second Gigantosaurus, and your voice smashes in for nine. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, 
And yeah, I don't really mind this. Double Maze Mind Tomb to find some ramp cards and eventually World Tree. Facing turn one Sentinel. Right, there's one ramp card. Guess we'll start with this as a white source. That way if we draw another green source, I can play this as white for Doomscar, which is probably going to be pretty important against a creature deck here. Looks like maybe a party deck. Right, there's my other green. So, this seems fine. Don't know if we'll necessarily have to Doomscar on three, but... At least we'll have the option. Right, opponent off to a slow start. Good path instead of Tome. Now we'll get Tome in play first. And then scry for an untapped land so we can path. A Realmwalker. That's one we don't mind getting rid of with Doomscar. Although I prefer ramping first. Opponent keeps up the mana from Sentinel, so they might have a two mana interactive spell. Cultivate, I guess, isn't bad. Helps me hit my land drop and also ramps. So they might have a counter spell here, who knows? Although not for Cultivate. And then we'll get red, black. And then we can still scry with Tome. Aha, uh -huh, Reflections of Lejara, so blue-green Relflections deck, as I like to call it. Although we will have to be party poopers here and destroy Reflections with our binding. And then I can still draw with Maze Mind Tomb. Another Reflections. So we won't be able to Yurion the second Reflections in time. We'll take a draw. Another Doomscar. That should buy us plenty of time here to set up our World Tree if we eventually find it, which we currently don't yet. So Path. And then I'm probably just gonna draw with Tome. Since I want to start using Tome more after we're done shuffling. Although maybe getting Path in place is not bad since then I have the option of shooting a smaller creature instead of having to Doomscar. Alright, this seems fine. Play land for a turn. Awakening can also help us dig towards our world tree. So this turn our opponent's going to go off with Reflections. Then we're probably going to wipe the board. Take it from there. They've got black mana in there too. Sentinels doubled. Maybe they're holding a counter spell for a sweeper. Aha, uh -huh, Shadow Sage. Yeah, that's going to deal a lot of damage here. So we're at 7, although we can gain life with Tome and World Tree. So we'll just untap. Doomscar. And then I think I want a life gain and card. Alright, perfect. Intervention. Or two here. Get double world tree just in case. Or I guess I might as well do it for three. Get world tree in play. And hope we're not dead. And then next turn activate world tree, I think.
All right, we could take it slow and try to set up a world tree for every single god by shuffling Turalf and Turgrid back, but there's a good chance we would draw into another god anyway. All right, 17 gods. And I suppose we can assemble the Pantheon here. Opponent did have another Shadow Sage in hand, as it turns out. Since our creatures have haste, and we have a Sika making mana, we can assemble the entire Pantheon. This card is probably the uh, Mystic Reflection, is my guess, which combos nicely with Shadow Sage as well, so they would have had to kill on the next turn here. Attack with all. And tap our lanes. And then Thassa can tap down some more elves. So our opponent doesn't need to go through blocks. We're just being friendly here. Also have Heliod for life gain once again. Didn't think that'll be necessary. And yeah, there's a Mystic Reflection. Alright. And with a satisfying thud, all 19 gods, or I guess 18, get in the red zone. Didn't have Altar to turn on Thassa this time. So overall, the World Tree deck, a lot of fun if you can get to the late game and activate it. And it does play quite well against removal heavy decks since you don't need to present any threats until you just win the game out of nowhere. But not the best against any hyper aggressive decks, so those will be pretty bad matchups. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.